following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go, Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, Brian Broaddus, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Wednesday, May 17th, 2023, season 19, episode number 7. Welcome to the latest edition of... Of the break, we are live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star, presented by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. And today, it is the first of four final shows before we take a little hiatus here. So we got four more shows, uh, and what I want to do in those four shows is do a recap. We're going to take a couple positions every day, and we're going to talk about what the Cowboys have done this off off season. We're going to compare where they were at the end of last season to where they are at this point. And, uh, and try to see if we can uh, shed some light on how much they've improved or not uh, over these last several months heading into the 2023 training camp. This year we'll be out in Oxnard, uh, I assume late July or so. Uh, Brian, I hope your station's going to let you come out. We'll get a little time with yeah, you Yeah, they, they, uh, they plan on it. Okay, so, good. yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll be out there eventually one time or another. Good. So. And, and we know Nick and, and Amber will be out there. I'll be out there. So looking forward to that later this summer. But for today, we're going to focus in on quarterbacks and linebackers, the quarterback of the offense and the defense. Before we do that, though, I wanted to get some reactions from you guys. 2023 schedule was released last week. What did you think about it? Was there anything on it that uh, that stood out to you as far as how the Cowboys will have to approach this season? <laughs> Not really. I mean, it, it, you know, I, I'm kind of – I used to do that. I used to play that game and go, oh, man, this looks tough and December looks tough. I don't know. Who, who, I mean, it looks like it could be if you're playing it now. But, you know, who knows who's yeah. healthy and all that and how teams are. There's always two or three games that are going to be tougher than you expect and two or three games that aren't. Um, so, you know, it's – the things I look at are just, you know, just how they, they got to get off to a pretty good start is what it seems like. And then – you know, just stay healthy. I mean, I, I think that I looked at it, it. They'll be favored, you know, unless things change dramatically. They'll be favored in twelve or thirteen games. So they 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 should go out and got a lot of night games, man. Got some night games. Ton. Yeah, it's uh, for guys that do yeah. post game shows until two in the morning. That's no fun. No fun but yeah. hopefully, we'll talk you speak about like it. someone that might know something. Yeah, yeah I know all about that. <laughs> I, I will say this: I don't think the league did them any favors in December. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't. I, I think when you start to talk about having. You got the game at Philadelphia at home on the 10th, and then at Buffalo, at Miami. Detroit could be playing for a division title. You know, uh, we'll see what happens with the commanders. Or, you know, the division, I think, is going to be pretty tight. So there's going to be a gauntlet that they're going to have to run. And I, I think they catch a, a break on the heat in Miami, even though you're a hot weather team here. Usually, if you go to Miami earlier in the year, as we've all known, you could melt in that place. And Humid, hot. Yeah. yeah so you got to, Amber. I'm sorry. Christmas Eve, you're going to have to spend in Miami. I could think of worse places to be. <laughs> I'm going to be sick that day. Yeah, well, you'll be in Miami. Sick. You'll be in Miami that day. But the the trip to Buffalo, as we all know, and we've all made that trip to yeah. Buffalo. It could be it could be very daunting as is. So, I don't think they did him any favors. Uh, you know, with the the way that part of the schedule rolls out, because I think every one of those teams. Are going to be playing for something, you know, and yes, you, you would kind of hope that you had somebody in there that wasn't playing for something like Carolina, or maybe even we'll see what the Rams if they had a turnaround or anything like that. But that part of it, I think, is going to be difficult. Yeah, I feel terrible because you asked that question, and I'm like, uh, what did I think? Because everything that I'm looking at it in a non football perspective <laughs> when the schedule comes out, yeah. I'm looking at the video we produced, that you guys produced, that the company put out. I'm looking at what other teams put out um, (laughs) production-wise. A lot of questionable things out there that uh, some teams decided to do. But also I'm looking at, okay, how many back-to-back home games do we have? How many on-the-road games? So I did not even look at when we're playing what opponent. Because to me, which is terrible, but I mean, I just know I got to be there. I'm going to be there for all of them. So it doesn't well, the two, really the two, affect me the, personally. Yeah, the two, the two uh, 
games to the West Coast to the San Francisco and Chargers game. Back you know, to back. back to back. It's a Sunday night and a Monday night. Yep, correct. So that man, that could be a little bit of a another. You thing. Do get a buy immediately after that? So yeah, that kind of helps a little. You, bit, you but, might. Yeah. You're gonna. You might need that buy for yeah. sure. I, I think you know the Aaron. I think getting Aaron Rodgers out of the way in Week Two, I think, is a good thing. Maybe the Jets haven't kind of figured things out with him, and you never want him to get rolling the way he can. So maybe that that gives you a little bit of a break as well. I mean, you're supposed to have nine nine you know road games, eight home games, but you do have you do have a break with two two games that you'll have more fans. That you will. I mean, you'll have more fans in in Arizona, and then in uh, at the other at L.A. Um, so, you know, that will be two games that you should be able to, you're not going to be like, it's not like going to be the black hole in Oakland. I mean, yeah. you know, you'll have a chance to, to crowd noise won't be the, the determiner be. of the game. Yeah. Shouldn't be. Yeah. And, and you're a better team. I think they're a better team than both of those teams. So when you factor that in, I mean, that you have a couple of, of, of opportunities to, to, you know, to, you know, have some success there. You're yeah. back. You got that Thursday to Thursday game again. Yep. You know, that's something that, that you missed that last year, right? Yeah. That yeah. to me, that only affects. Like th- that's like uh, Gamber was saying. That's just that only kind of affects like personally, like Thanksgiving, your Thanksgiving weekend that you wanted to have is a little yeah. afterwards is a little different. But you know you still get the break after that. So I don't know. I don't know how much that affects. I guess it affects it some honestly the, for a team, but I don't know for the team. I actually thought it was a little bit of an advantage because they get that even though you got that short week for the Thursday game. Then you get a full week for the next Thursday game. And then they actually have a long week because they, they don't play until the following Sunday. And it's a Sunday night game. So when you factor all that in, like there's actually – it makes that three-week period, not the front part of the three weeks, but the back part of the three yeah. weeks, it makes it a little easier for them to kind of manage, I think, at a time in the year where you think you probably need that little bit of extra rest to be able to get that yeah. heading into December a couple extra days. I think that's actually a benefit for them. But, yeah, I, I think the, the interesting thing here really for me was about the, what you were saying, Brian, about that December stretch. I think yeah. that's the part you look at. And, Nick, you're absolutely right. We don't know what that's going to look yeah, like. We've had other years where you go into the, December thinking, oh, my gosh, and then you get to that point. Well, you know it's going like, to be cold in Buffalo not, and you do Washington. Know that. So yep. you know yeah. that. And, yep. and you got to be able to run the football like they want to do. Because, yep. I mean, throwing the ball around in Buffalo, we saw it. I mean, it might it can be, be a tough. Storm. You never yeah. know. Yeah. You never know about that. The thing about it is, too, <laughs> that you always worry about <laughs> December, those flex yeah. games, yeah. potentially. You've already got two night games in December. You know, and the only games that they could flex on you would be the at Buffalo and at Miami. Mm-hmm. Would they flex you knowing that you've already got two night games? Or Washington, up? too. They yeah. could flex that one, I guess. Well, right? they could flex the day on that one. That's the, yeah. the, the, the that could yeah. be a Saturday is yeah. what that one could be. I doubt they flex the Christmas Eve game, right? I mean, is there a game? That's Christmas already Eve? there that's is already a, a isn't that isn't that a wait, it's not that's a, a night that's game? Not, that's an afternoon game. Yes, yeah, three twenty-five. God, game. how many? I, how, I didn't check. How many do they have? Three Christmas games this year, or one Christmas I don't, I don't, game. I don't really. Know Honestly, what, this, what, I think what that, I saw, and I might. I thought be wrong there was one. This. Was it Jets, Miami, or was, am I thinking about something else? Somebody else was, or Giants. Giants oh, Giants, 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 Giants Eagles. Eagles, Giants Eagles yeah. on Christmas. So is that the only Christmas Day game? That that would be, you know, I mean, do you flex? I mean, does does that turn into a Ugh. a deal where you have to flex that? I I think with the fact that you've got the two games in December that are already TV games. I don't think you have to worry about those getting flexed. Yeah. But that's something you always have to consider when you're, you know, you're playing for these games late in the year. Somewhere I thought I saw the 18th, the weekend of the 18th was the only was the weekend that could have been flexed and not the one after that. But I don't know that for sure. I don't yeah. I don't know about that Christmas Eve. I would hope. I would hope that they don't. It's already bad enough we're doing a road Christmas Eve game. I would hate that to be a night game, but yeah. you know, we'll I see mean, how it goes. You think about it just from a a standpoint of you start off on the road, yeah. you end the season on the road, and then you know Christmas is also on the road, all on the East Coast. So you know, not that there's any short trips really for the Cowboys ever, mm-hmm. except for Houston, New Orleans, Houston. New Orleans, that's it. But yeah. Man, there's going to be some pressure packed games in that yeah. month. I mean, I think it actually could start, and I say December. I think it actually could start at the home game against Seattle. That Thursday, yeah, I was, that Thursday yeah. game, you know, Seattle, Seattle, Philly, Buffalo, Miami, Detroit, Commander, all going to be playing for something. Every, I mean, and you're likely playing for something too. So Seattle's you know? on Thanksgiving off. Uh, no, it's the Thursday after your game against yeah. the Commanders. But Seattle's on Thanksgiving as well, right? That oh, you mean are they playing on Thanksgiving? They should, else? right? Yeah, I'm going to guess. I guess they probably are. I would I, say, I, yeah, I don't know. I, don't know, I, don't know that. That. I mean, every team's going to play a Thursday night game, so yeah, you know, it could be, yeah. 
I would could think be, could that be they, they wouldn't play on Sunday. And But, I mean, it happens all the time. Oh, yeah, every team. Yeah. Most teams will have a Sunday to Thursday game. Well, every Se- team, I think, Seattle's will. playing San Francisco the week before on Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving. yeah. Okay. The, the night game. Yeah. But I'm thinking, like, oh, wait, I mean, it happens every year where that final month of December is like kind of – you're playing to get into the playoffs. I'm trying to think, when has it not been that way? Well, you got the Colts that one time, right? Didn't you get the Colts there last year where they were just – was it last year or two years? I remember. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you get teams that are just completely out of it. Yeah. And and that's your hope, that you get somebody that, that, uh, you know, is not – they're not going anywhere, and then you just beat them up and then you move on. But – yeah. Sometimes those those teams can be dangerous too, well, you know. Yeah. Like Washington at the end of the season last year, you know. I mean, I know the Cowboys didn't play a lot of players, but that you know they were. It's kinda... funny if Washington would have won the week before, they were playing to get into the playoffs. Yeah. They 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 started Carson Wentz the week before, and, yeah. it, and it messed them up. The yeah, the thing that I could say this the one thing we've also kind of learned is the league tends to schedule the if they're trying to move on get the AFC teams done. It's always like in the month of December they put AFC. You got two AFC teams, uh, you know, mm-hmm. in that in that you know. You, it would be better to me personally if you had somebody like maybe I don't think New England. We'll see about New England how they're mm-hmm. going to be. I would much rather have New England than I would Buffalo or one of those other mm-hmm. teams down there in that you know thing. I think yeah. Buffalo and, and Miami are going to be battling for the division title. The fact is, though, we knew going into this year, yeah. even before the schedule came out, you knew the teams they were playing. That's a daunting list of yeah. opponents just in general. Mm-hmm. So however they were going to match them up, it was going to be a daunting task for the Cowboys yeah. this season because the NFC East is yeah. so tough and you're playing a, a division, AFC East, that also has yeah. some pretty good teams and, and NFC East as well. I mean, I'm sorry, NFC West as well. The quarterbacks. So, better or worse calendar than last year? Schedule? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah. I would say worse. Are you, when you say worse, are you saying worse for the Cowboys? Well, or? Yeah, f- okay. for the Cowboys. Yeah. In all aspects. Based on what I thought You're this put, time last year AFC versus South is this awful. time this year, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, I would yeah. say it's probably it's yeah. a harder schedule this year yeah. than it was last year. Yeah, you got those opinion. games. When you played Houston later in the season, didn't you, last year? And that, yeah. that game turned out to be well, a last drive game. You got yeah. a second place schedule, which means that three teams you're playing that finish second are Carolina, Detroit, and the Chargers. Uh, or Seattle, isn't it? Well, Seattle, I think you play the whole division. Oh, but, you do? But, yeah. But, yeah, that's right. But I'm the sorry, ones the that you're division, playing right. because you're right. you finished second, yeah. those teams, you know, those teams are all battling. You know, it's not like you're getting a huge break yeah. there. I'd rather take Minnesota than, than Detroit. Right, right. <laughs> Detroit's with you. going that yeah. way. Give me, Carolina, the, give me the first team versus the well, second team. Detroit, Detroit might win the North. Right. I, Detroit's yeah. got, they got the a type team of team now. that can win the North. They definitely got a team. All right, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to jump into our – off-season review. We're going to start with the quarterbacks. We're going to get into some conversation on that. We'll be at DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Hey, honey, can we talk? Of course. What's up? Well, I just thought you should know. I've been curious about the new Dr. Pepper strawberries and cream. (gasps) Have you felt this way a long time? No, I just think I'd really like the taste of Dr. Pepper swirled with layers of flavor. If you feel that way, I think you should try it, babe. It's amazing. I mean, you're amazing, too. (laughs) New Dr. Pepper Strawberries and Cream, the new flavor you deserve. Want to use the Cowboys locker room's favorite products? Check out the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Playmaker, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The Playmaker includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word cowboys. The Jack Black Playmaker, 10 bucks, free shipping. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? 
Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want great, fresh tasting, ready to serve guacamole for your home gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero Guacamole. Back to the break. Register now for 2023 Dallas Cowboys Youth Camps. Football camps are led by former NFL players and dance camps are taught by the current Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Use code CAMPS23 to get $25 off registration. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash camps. Welcome back. Segment two of the break. <laughs> what, what are we waiting here? I just kind of left it out there like camps, like you were going to say something nope. else. Slash, slash camps. I mean, Check them out. That's oh, what I would yeah, say. Check them out. Camps. Awesome. I think of Dave Campo when I think of camps. I talked to him the other yeah. day. No cheering in the press press box, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> we were in Jacksonville. Yeah. He was going nuts he up there. He loves his Jaguars, doesn't he? Yeah, true. All right, welcome back. It is the second right. segment of the break. <laughs> Live from the DallasCowboys.com. Whoever's paying you. Studios, yes, WBC Bingo. Studios at the Star. Um, let's let's this, oh, this, segment, this segment is brought to you by blockchain.com. You um, that. so here's what we're gonna do. I we're gonna do a, a an off season review. We've got uh, we're gonna go through every position here over the next four shows. Uh, today we're gonna focus in on the quarterbacks and the linebackers. And I want to start with this simple question. We're talking quarterbacks first. Are they better, worse, or the same as they were in 2022? I think they're I think better. I think yeah. they're better, and I think they're better because they know what they have in Cooper Rush. I think that's the thing. I think you have to have a little bit of confidence. I know there's a big turnover on the offensive staff, new line coach, new running back coach, new play caller, uh, you know, new OC. You know, There's a lot of things going on here. But I think that when you look at the quarterbacks, their job is going to be to work with Dak Prescott. We all understand that. But I think there's a confidence within the organization about Cooper Rush. If we play to a certain level, if we play a certain way, we can win football games with him playing there. I mean, you know, four and one during the year. Heck, had a chance to win at Philadelphia. I mean, if they didn't, you know, if it was the first time in the of his five games that he had some turnovers in that game, or they might have had a chance to win it. Mm -hmm. But I, I think they have to be really confident about their backup situation, and a lot of people like Will Greer here as well. So I think they're in a, uh, I think they're in a much better, better spot. Yeah, I would probably just say the same, and that's not anything bad or, or, or good. I, I, the, the personnel's the same, and so you know, with a new coaching staff, new play callers, it, it could go better, could go worse. So because of that, I, I, I would say same. But I mean, I think there's some optimism for for Dak. You know, I mean. Those, those, all those interceptions obviously weren't on on him. Some of them were. So they clean those up, and let's see if you can take those away and eliminate that and manage the game differently. And then I think it could be better. I, I think I think we're done with the Dak has to go win the football game all the time. You know, forget the money, forget what he's paying the salary and all that. Just just go play the smart way. And I think if they they're all on the same page there, then I think this offense can be better. I think to me, I would be. It would be the same because so far, no, none of the changes they have made is an indicator yet that it's going to be improved or even worse. I mean, it's up in the air. We'll see what happens there. But uh, as far as like what we've seen from Dak, we haven't really seen him yet again out in the field really throwing those passes to tell you okay where he's at with the offense and and the guys catching the passes and all that and how's that running game going to be looking like what's the protection around him um but also one of the things that does make me think that it could be better is the fact and and you were mentioning i think yesterday off the show derek um how they use him running with the football him trying to escape using his legs the running game uh quarterback sneaks and things like that that he's proven he's good at it he's proven that he can do it and he's proven to be successful getting into the end zone i forgot how many touchdowns he was able to get last year just running uh, the ball but that's one aspect that I really hope they can carry over this year as well and, and just really, really benefit from that. That I think uh, overall, as far as quarterback, I think he, he can take it even further. He might have to be their short yardage option without Ezekiel Elliott here. 
you know, that's the one thing. I mean, if you're one of those people that believe in analytics and stuff, they will say that Zeke is, you know, it's 5% less than what you believe mm-hmm. the average. I mean, there's all these numbers you could throw out there, but they're going to have to, when we get to the running back portion of this conversation, where are they going to have that short yardage third and one, third and two? Is it uh, is it going to be Dak Prescott, fourth and one? Are they going to have to find a way to make up for what we thought with our eyes or saw with our eyes, uh, Ezekiel Elliott converting a lot of those things. So the running aspect of Dak, maybe not as a scrambler, but the running aspect of him being, they got to get first downs. Yeah. And that's his, that would be his uh, area. Speaking of Dak running the ball, um, this was the stat I threw out to you guys yesterday when I was mentioning it. Uh, Dak averaged, he was, his average is second highest total uh, of rush attempts per game at 3.8 last year of his career. Um, and it seemed like a bit of a shock to me. Do you guys think that that, because it seemed like he didn't run that much, uh, but all that being said, do you guys think uh, that that's enough, or do you think that they really have to make more of a concerted effort of integrating him more into the offense from the standpoint of using his legs and actually calling more plays for him to run as opposed to him just running when the, the opportunity presents itself? Yeah, I think there are some times on those those read options that you know I'd like to see him keep it a little bit more. He's, he's got to get more comfortable doing it. I think some of those those numbers were were sneaks yeah. last year. And I'm gonna throw something else out there about the quarterback sneaks. Everyone says, okay, look at Philly, they're doing it. Jalen Hurts, you know, but Jason Kelsey, don't forget that that he's the best center in the league, and and he knows how to get leverage, and he knows how to you know to create a push. It's not just about the quarterback being strong; that's part of it. But you also have to win right off the line, and the Eagles have a good line, and some of the the teams that have quarterback sneaks th- uh, that do it a lot, they have that offensive line, and so Biotish, Martin. Whoever's playing left guard, they have to figure that out, too, if they're going to run those quarterback sneaks. So it's not always fourth and inches. It's fourth and one and a half. Then what happens on fourth and one and a half? That's where you miss Zeke, fourth and one and a half and two. And I think teams with like the Eagles, they'll still run the, the sneak, uh, especially if they're being able to push from the back. They still they didn't change that rule, did they? No, they didn't change that rule. I don't think they will, actually. No, I think it's going to be a little bit different from the Eagles this year because of – Cam Jurgens now takes over at guard, and you know, and he's not the bigger of the body of the guys, you know. And so, to me, with Dickerson and and Jurgens and Kelsey, that's that's a good size group, but it's not what they've had before. Mm-hmm. And so maybe that'll that dynamic will change a little bit for them. But yeah, and Dallas, as you mentioned, I mean, they they've got questions at left guard. Is that going to be Tyler Smith? Who is that going to be? Is that going to be somebody that? You know, I mean, I think it's a lot different to say if Steele would have, I mean, everybody's talking about Steele playing left yeah. guard. And I think that's, to me, that's just, it blows my mind to even think of that. But, you know, y- it depends on who you have inside blocking. Yeah. That really I, makes a difference. Sorry. No, I was I just th- going to say, uh, um, I just hope that the runs are intentional, not because it's out of need and he's being forced to kind of just scramble and, and try to get away. And also keeping in mind, I, and we talk about Cooper Rush, the backup, and all that. But you gotta always remember: the more you run as a quarterback, the higher the risk of you getting injured. And this is not a year that I want to see that happening whatsoever. Uh, especially when you talk about going all in with the defense and everything that's uh, happening this year. But like, I there are a lot of concerns on the on, with the O line and the running game. I am very, very unsure as to how exactly that's going to look like until I get to see Tony Pollard actually running at training camp with the ball. You know, I was going to say this about a left tackle. Usually when you have a domino effect, it starts at the top and it kind of dominoes down and affects other players. Left tackle or tackle seems to be one that the domino might even start at the bottom or in the middle because look at Tyler Smith. Most people think, all right, who is going to affect where he plays? Tyron Smith? And Terrence Steele. To me, the wild card of it all is Willetsko. If Matt Willetsko comes in and does what they think he might do, that providing a left tackle, right tackle, swing type of guy, now you've got, and maybe that both these other tackles are, are healthy, now it just makes sense to put Tyler Smith at left guard because now you really are getting your, your top five. So I don't think it's just the domino effect at top. I think if Willetsko shows them something, he could be the wild card in this whole thing that they, to give them depth that they really need. Are you more concerned about, and I'll ask everybody here, but are you more concerned about about Tyron Smith is regressing as a player or his injury history? 
injury history. injury history, but but that does affect him regressing as a player. Yeah, so see, I think they go hand in hand yeah, a little bit. But yeah. I do think the the injury. To, uh, yeah, as I'm watching him play, I'm. I'm but watch- hold on, where are you playing him? See, that's that's the that's the problem. They're going to play him at left tackle, I believe. Okay. They're going to play him at left tackle, and so you know, and that's his natural position. That's what he's done all these years. I, I think for so many years now, we always talk about him, the potential of him getting injured, you know, and you, you just kind of know it. It's, okay, we're going to miss three games. It's going to be week seven, eight, nine, or it's going to be, you know, something's going to happen. And then it'll be like, okay, well, then, you know, Tyler Smith will have to go back outside to me. But I think there's more to Tyron Smith's game than it is just the injury history. I think there is some actual regression there as a player. I, and I and I and I and I and I think maybe it is because of some of the things that have happened to him throughout his career injury wise. But when he was healthy, you know, I was expecting that right side with him and yeah. Martin. It wasn't as clean as it. And, and people could say, well, Brian, he's a left tackle and all mm-hmm. that. Well, then why did they think that they had to play him? Why didn't they move Tyler Smith over there? Right. Well, that's shame on them, not shame that, on him necessarily. But right? that's what I'm saying though. That's what I'm saying though. Maybe him being back on the left side will be better. Excuse me, will be better for him. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I there, there's times where I was seeing a regressing player, and I'm, I'm thinking, why continue with a regressing player if you got this young player that has this future right. at that spot? Don't mess with the young player who's proven that he could play the position. You know, don't make him have to play guard when he looks like a natural left tackle. He looks like a young uh, Tyron Smith out there at times playing the way he's moving around. Just comes down to who that left guard is as opposed to the left tackle for Tyron Smith. I mean, what's what's your better option there? And also, uh, like, how much are we regressing? You know, I mean, I think LeBron James has probably regressed some, uh, you know, over yeah. his career, and he's still playing at a high level. I want to see Tyler uh, Tyron Smith regress. I don't want to see that, but if he regresses at left tackle – like, all right, now you're right now. Now, right, we, we gave him a pass for the right side, and he was coming back from injury. Now he's had all offseason. Now he's back to his normal position, and it's still not there. Then, yeah, I think That's he, something I definitely am going to keep the eye to. on. Because, to me, I, 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 I would have never believed this. And I thought, man, they're going to have more power over there on the right side. Martin and Smith, uh, Tyron Smith, are going to get that done over there. They didn't run the ball well enough over there. Mm-hmm. They just didn't. And, you know, there were a lot of things that were going on. And, and there was a natural fit between, between Steele and Martin in the running game. You clearly saw it that when they ran the football, those two guys had it. They were working, and it wasn't the same. With, with, and I, and I, I think it's a little bit more about the regression of, of Tyron Smith. And, that's, and, and, you know, yeah, I worry about the injury history. But I think we're starting to see. I think we're starting to see it, it it show up a little bit more. The regression part. On that point, both of you guys talked about the regression. Right now, if you had to order the tackles on this team, where does Tyler? I mean, where does Tyron Smith fit in that? I I, I can't, me personally, I have to go with Tyler Smith at left tackle and Terrence Steele at right tackle. From what I saw, the way that they. So moved, you think he's the third best tackle on this team? I do right now. Okay. Yeah, I do. What would you think? Nick? Uh I. I still, I, I mean, I, I'm just one of those benefit of the doubt guys. So I, I give him, I give him, you know, first. But, but it's also because I know that I can put Tyler Smith at left guard. See, I'm just not worried about the left guard, left tackle for him because this isn't going to be something that happens for five years. See, Tyrone Crawford, that was always a thing because it was where was his best fit. But Tyler Smith, like Tyron's not going to be here forever. So if he's got one more year, fine. If he's not, if he doesn't, he doesn't. But I'm okay with with one more year because Tyler Smith is about the smartest player in that locker. He's really smart. He can figure that out. And I just don't think that he's going to regress back and forth. And you know, because we'll, we'll get this figured out. The, the the chance for regression of Tyler Smith and maybe for all these offensive linemen if is if they're going to really miss Joe Philbin. But I'm willing to give. I'm willing to give the new coach the Sorry. opportunity. Mike Solari, I'm willing to give him the new opportunity. There are a lot of moving pieces on this offense, and most of it's on the coaching staff. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the thing that you have to keep an eye on. How, you know, is, Did Tyler Smith – and let's be honest, there's people in the organization who will admit this. You know, Joe Philbin wasn't totally on board with Tyler Smith, but what did he do with Tyler Smith? He coached him up. You know, he said, okay, maybe he's not my guy, but he coached him up. He took a liking to Terrence Steele, proved a lot of people wrong about Terrence Steele, including me. You know, 
I do worry about when you flip. I think the I think the offensive line coach is probably the third most important coach on the staff. The OC, the DC, offensive line coach, and you no know, changing that out is something that I always I'm always okay. Or, and then but you know Zach Martin's coming out. Hey, I really like what's going on here. Like what you know you, you hear that stuff. So that part of it is encouraging. What you don't need is a Paul Alexander coming in here, <laughs> and then mid season they're all going. We can't block to save our rears here, yeah. you know, because see of that's the problem with to me the benefit of the doubt. the The problem with the benefit of the doubt is that it equates to a few games of let's see how it's going. What are the results of each and one of those games? We don't know. And and, and this, to be fair, this staff has proven, as opposed to the previous staff that they're not afraid to make changes whenever. And if you got to sit, like change someone out, switch them out, take them out, they'll do it. But how, how long are they giving Tyron Smith and what is that looking like? And at what point do you pull him out and say, okay, there's other options. And, and then you got to might actually work great. Effect. Yeah. Tyron Smith might look great. And I, it'd be in my concerns about it would be completely, you know, but it, it is concerns going forward. I I've got to the point now where I don't think about the injury anymore. I just don't. I think about where is he as a player when he plays? You know, is he still playing at this level? And I think there's times last year where he wasn't. And it might be because he was on the right side there. That might have been, you know, hey, good for him to go out there and say, hey, I'll do whatever I have to do. But the fact that a Hall of Fame tackle said, I'll play on the right side, tells you all you need to know about the left tackle that you're trying to move to guard now. That a Hall of Fame tackle was willing to play right tackle, so the left tackle who was doing damn well could stay at his spot. Well, that's because the right tackle was hurt. The Terrence Steele was also hurt. I mean, that that was part of it too. Yeah. So you know, this they, they got a lot of moving parts. And the good thing is that when you get to training camp, you know, Ty- Tyron Smith's not going to be out there a ton. He'll be he'll be doing some. But that'll give a let's go. That'll give. I think Josh your stub out with let's go is right. Awesome. I think yeah. Awesome Richards. Awesome Richards. I mean, another gonna, one. Yeah. He has a yeah. chance to get in there. So yep. they they have a lot of depth there, and that's why Josh Ball's going to be playing. Guard or, or both back and forth. It's going to be the biggest guard you've ever seen. <laughs> All right, we're going to take our first break when we come back. We're actually going to continue on the conversation of O line. That was not going to be one of our positions. Sorry. We'll talk so much about there goes your O line. We're, we're going to make that a <laughs> okay. part of the segment. Let's talk a little bit about center because I do think that's a conversation yeah. worth having. We'll say when we come back, DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Want to use the Cowboys locker room's favorite products? Check out the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Playmaker, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The Playmaker includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word cowboys. The Jack Black Playmaker, 10 bucks, free shipping. SeatGeek has your back no matter what kind of fan you are. So whether you're a diehard fan or a don't really care fan, a we got them next time fan or we'll never win again fan, a here for the tailgate fan or a first one through the gates fan, SeatGeek not only makes buying and selling tickets easier than ever before, they made just about everything else easier too. So whether you're a here every week fan or haven't been here in years fan, SeatGeek has you covered. Download the SeatGeek app today. SeatGeek, your ticket to great seats. Hey, honey, can we talk? Of course. What's up? Well, I just thought you should know. I've been curious about the new Dr. Pepper strawberries and cream. (gasps) Have you felt this way a long time? No, I just think I'd really like the taste of Dr. Pepper swirled with layers of flavor. If you feel that way... I think you should try it, babe. It's amazing. I mean, you're amazing, too. (laughs) New Dr. Pepper Strawberries and Cream. The new flavor you deserve. Back to the break. For fans with nothing but the star on their mind, 
New Era Spring Styles have arrived. Head to the nearest pro shop to log on to shop.dallascowboys.com, a fanatics experience, and grab your favorites today. Welcome back. Final segment of The Break Life in SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star, presented by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. We're continuing our conversation on quarterbacks and offensive line. Let's talk about the center position. Uh, <laughs> last year. What's wrong? What no, me? I'm just laughing about how that quickly. I tend to do that. To that's my fault. I switched I, it to. A you did, but go. it was fine. Like fine. I, I do Obviously, that that's all the time. We, that, that's we, how we do it, right? Linebacker. Mike is still linebacker. Yeah. And Mike is really no, no, no. Good. Don't fine. do that. Don't burn you're saying, three. Now you're right. no. We're saving linebacker. You know how hard Derek works <laughs> on cannot, putting together an outline. <laughs> I don't even want you to mention linebacker. Okay, no talk of defense right now. I, I We're going to talk offensive line quarterback. Let's go offensive line center. Do not burn that position. All right, center. Let's talk about Biotis. He he ended up in the Pro Bowl last year. Foot and, in the mouth. I mean, I mean, I've just, I was like, get rid of this guy. I mean, yeah, but you know, honestly, that, that's where I was going with he's this. He's gotten me, better. Let me Way say this better. though: he went to the Pro Bowl, and yeah. you know, we see this sometimes in NFL guys that end up in the Pro Bowl. You can make it's an argument as to whether they really are that caliber of player. Where is he at this point in your mind? Is he a top five player? Which, if you're in the Pro Bowl, typically you should be in mm-hmm. that range. Is he that kind of player? Or is he a player that kind of got the benefit of, uh, this guy couldn't go, this guy couldn't go, so here you go? I don't think it was that deep. Okay. I think it was second, you know, second uh, guy. Um, Which would make him a top five kind yeah, of guy, yeah. Yeah, I think so. And um, he's and he, played, and he played on a good team last year, too, with a good offense that, that moved the ball and so and plays on a lot of those night games that we talked about. So And you just didn't notice him a whole lot, what you did the year before. False starts, bad snaps, you know, getting kind of pushed back a lot. I thought he, when you're not noticing a lot from him, that means he's doing his job. And I thought he did a good job. Yeah, when you you look at overall about how he might be the fourth best center in the conference, when you start to talk about, uh, you know, Philadelphia with Kelsey, Ragnall from Detroit, uh, Jensen from Tampa. You know, those are the guys yeah. that are kind of like that everybody talks about as the or the better centers. I would say he's somewhere in that conversation with those guys. I, I think we would all, you know, from what I've seen, might take those guys over him. But he, he has gotten better. And that's, again, what I talk about maybe with the switch at offensive line coach. Are you going to hurt somebody's, uh, you know, ability to get better if, in fact, now he's hearing a different message or different techniques Along the way, but he 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 doesn't take a back seat to any of those guys. I mentioned all those other those guys, really good centers, but he fits right into that group when you look at overall the run blocking skill, the pass blocking skill, uh, his ability to communicate with the others. You don't see the break the breakdowns in the middle of the of the offensive line with him. So I I, I think that he he's probably in that top four or five in the conference is what I would say. And Jensen He's never been my main concern. Yeah. I mean, you've criticized yeah. him at moments, which fair. There were area, yeah. you know, areas of improvement. But to me personally, when looking at the O line, he's never been. He's never been my main concern there. Uh, also, kind of tough when you go from what you had in Travis Frederick. I know we had in between Joe Looney, right before Tyler took over, but. When you look at what you were used to, someone that barely ever made any mistakes with Travis Fredericks, and then, and then you get a guy like him coming in here, rookie, jumping into that role. I, th- I think all in all, he's done a pretty decent job at the position. Yeah, the only time I really worried about him was when he was playing people like Vita Vea, which you don't play those guys every week. But when you played those guys, yeah. there was the – So the, does everybody that plays Vita Right, Vita exactly. Vita. It's the strength that you worry about. But <laughs> yeah. but you're right, Brian. That's a, every every team playing them has that same concern. Yeah. I don't know if that necessarily takes him down in my book as far as – But it's as, not like you know, he's been as, killed, you know? Yeah. Like, and it even was just, when player, playing players like that. Yeah, he would just have moments in games like yeah. that in the past yeah. where I'd be like, ooh, whoa. Well, yeah. so, I, think the, I think if you really want to be honest with it – the breakdowns were more maybe on the left side, on the on the at left guard, and all of a sudden, you know, you're trying to help, trying to cover. You know, there's you know, there really there were times where I mean, he was dealing with a revolving door over there at left guard. You know, and how about going through the whole, how about going through training camp, working with you know with Tyler Smith and others over there, and then now Tyler Smith has to move to tackle. Oh wait a minute, it's uh, uh, you know Connor McGovern over there and now mm-hmm. Connor McGovern's kind of having his struggles and you know oh wait now you know, now I'm having my struggles so it, it's not an easy thing but I, I think overall to Amber's point he he hasn't been to the point where it's like every week you're watching him and going gosh he is the he's the reason we did it with Connor Williams you know Connor Williams every week it felt like there were those two or three plays where he just 
he was just overwhelmed. And, and, and maybe there were some times with Biotis that happened, but not as much as you, you'd think. If you had to wrap it up for this offensive line discussion and say, do you think they're better, worse, or the same as last year, where do you fall? Hmm. I think they're going to be better, hmm. I think. I mean, they, they, they lost McGovern, but I, yeah. I think they, they're they just going to have a little bit more depth there, depth across the line. I think the Biotish is better, so that you got to factor that part in. If Steele comes back, you got a little bit more depth there at tackle. Yeah. And, and you know, the well, let's go and Richards, and you're just throwing more things out there. Edoga uh, at guard, he might be yeah. a pretty good option there. So I, I – it's still Tyler open. Smith, second year. Tyler Smith, second year should be. I mean, yeah, you're right. That should be a, a big jump for him. Uh, depends on where he plays, but I think he, you know, like I said, I think he'd be fine either way. We've heard you, you've heard my concerns about Tyron Smith. You need to get Steele back for sure. Mm-hmm. The the thing with well, let's go is a great point. How well can uh, Awesome Richards pick things up? This is not just a fifth round. Sometimes in the fifth round, you're taking a guy from directional university that yeah. you know doesn't do this this kid played football in the ACC big time he should have been picked earlier than the fifth round uh, and, and on my on my book and I, I'll tell you Adoka is the one the big unknown for me right now mm-hmm. you know I how they went and got a veteran guy will usually does a pretty good job of protecting himself with those veteran type players he might be the one guy that steps in and fills in at that guard spot that allows them a little bit more flexibility at the tackle spot those they they've got it, to me it's not so much about the starters it's about who the backups are because if the backups play well enough that might be able to solidify some other spots on the on the starting five yeah I, I would think and you probably you've you've been in these conversations everyone's got like support groups cheering sections yeah. you know the ones that that want Ty, Tyler Smith to play left tackle they're also going to be really big Edoga fans. Yeah. They're like, oh, Edoga's good. I mean, he's good at left yeah. guard. You know, just keep the guy at tackle. And, you yeah. know, Edoga can do it. And the guys that want to move him, they're like, yeah, this guy's not good. You know, so. Well, we didn't even mention Farniak either. Oh, yeah. And Farniak was a guy, if you remember, like at the beginning of the season, what happened when McGovern went down in the Tampa game, who was playing left guard? It was mm-hmm. Farniak. And so there are guys that they like a lot more than Brian Broadus likes. But Brian Bross is doing radio, and they're doing scouting. And that's and we'll also see if they really still like yeah. him as much with yeah. a new offensive line coach, right? That's right. also part of it, too. They're, 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 you know, these line coaches come in, and they get a little stubborn. And they get a lot – you know, oh, well, this is not my – well, none of these – you know, yeah. Mike Solari, none of these are your guys. Well, maybe Awesome Richards. Yeah. Awesome Richards, TJ Bass, uh, Earl Bostic, maybe those are your guys yep. because you were part of the process that brought these guys to Dallas. And Cowboys. in fairness to the coach, like there may be things he's asking them to do that are different than what the previous offensive line coach was asking them to do, yeah. and they may be better at the things the previous they, offensive line coach wanted them to do, and not as good at the as the ones he wants them to. It was what he wants them to do now. My so. hope, my hope is that 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 Mike comes in here and then there's that group that they get and they work all together and there's not a fractured. If this is a fractured group, they're all of a sudden, well, this guy does this and this guy does that and this guy doesn't do that that well, your offensive line is not going to be as effective. And the one thing that that that, uh, that Joe Philbin had – when these guys, when they were all healthy, they played really well. They, they, you know, half the season with Steele and Smith and Biotish, and those guys got better. They got better with uh, with him coaching. We'll see how it plays out. To wrap up the quarterback conversation, <laughs> I got a simple question for you: yeah. Dax interceptions will be more, less, or about the same in 2023? <laughs> it has to be less. It has to be less. He, 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 this this isn't working. Somebody else is calling the plays. Some there are going to be major changes going on. Not major. Not like Cooper Rush would take over. But I mean, he's got to be less. It was too many in just a, a, a short amount of time. You know, I mean, you can't lead the league in interceptions and also miss five games. So it's got to be less. Yep. <laughs> I mean, nope. there's no, nothing else to say uh, to that. It, it absolutely needs to, or otherwise we're going to have freaking riots out here from fans. <laughs> we're we looking at draft, draft prospects. Draft, yeah. I mean, uh, it's Caleb not Williams. going to be good if it, happens, if it happens to be exactly the same as last year. The thing that scared me a little bit over the weekend was that Brian Schottenheimer told us this thing's not broke. You know, he started talking about that that there were things that you know the first the previous coaches did a fine job. Everything was fine about it. Yeah. You know, 
Brian, I don't need to hear that. I really don't. There's a reason why you made all those changes or coach yeah. made all those changes because obviously there were some issues there. You know, it, you know, maybe it's coach speak and all that. But to me, I would say, you know, if, if I'm a coach, I would think, well, yeah, we absolutely have to cut down on the turnovers. Yeah. We, ab- there, we, we sat down with Dak at the end of the season and told him we can't throw the ball here. We can't throw the ball here. You know, the thing that the thing that would would bother me, I think that it might be the same. I think it because I think you have a quarterback that plays the way he does. And he's willing to throw the ball in places he's probably not willing, he's not supposed to. How many times did we, like Nick or you guys, would all be in the press conference after a game and he would go, I need to be better. Yeah. I need to be better. And it seemed like it was every week. And every question, even after a victory, would be, What did you see when you threw that interception? You know, and it was always the question about the interception. I think it's I think it's in the player. I think it's in the player. I don't think you can sit there and pull the reins back on Dak and have him be the type of player he needs to be to win these games. And he plays on a lot of feel and guts and, you know, I think I can do this, a lot of that. And maybe the skill isn't always there. I have a feeling you're going to see some of the similar uh, similar things that happen. And whether you're willing to live with it or not, uh, that's what it's going to be. I'll tell you, from my standpoint, I think it's actually going to be a lot better. And the reason why is because I think last year – was a big function of the fact that the receivers that he had just weren't good enough. And you can look at every position, one through whatever number you want to go on the depth chart at wide receiver, they are better this year than they were last year. CeeDee Lamb has ascended, in my opinion, to being one of the premier receivers in the NFL. Brandon Cooks is a better two than what you had last year with whoever you want to put at two. Michael Gallup as a three is much better than what mo- than what definitely what you had at three last year. And my hope is that he's a better player than he was last year. And I still have hope for Jalen Tolbert as a fourth, fifth, whatever that is, guy that's going to be trying to trying to rise up the depth chart. So when you look at it, when you look at Dak and and when he's had problems. You go back and look at that season where they had to go out and get Amari Cooper. That was another year where you were like, man, Dak doesn't look great. But it has something to do with the receivers he's throwing to. And so I have every faith in the fact that if you bring in a Brandon Cooks, and they did bring in a Brandon Cooks, I think that changes the dynamic. I think Dak gets immediately better. And this has not been a problem that consistently throughout his career has existed. He's not been a turnover machine. So I think it'll be much better. We'll see how it goes. But I'm looking forward to him having a much better year this year from the interception standpoint than he did in 2022. All right. We appreciate you guys joining us. We're back. Next week, uh, we'll get into some other positions. Uh, I'm not going to tell these guys until, <laughs> until we get there, and uh, hopefully they'll stick to the script. Till then, for Nick Eatman, <laughs> Brian Broaddus, Amber Garcia, I'm Derek Eagles, and this has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!